Network Dojo. All right, here we're going to talk about what it's like to actually sit through the lab, the process you go through, and, and just what it's going to be like. So as I talked about in the last video, make sure you arrive early to the testing site. Do not be late. If you're too late, they won't even let you take the exam. But if you're late and they've already started, they don't give you more time. You are in a time crunch, and our first section is only one hour long. So if you miss 20 minutes of the first section, you just lost a third of your time, and now you're really under the gun. And again, if you can't pass that first section, you can't pass the entire lab at all. So do not be late. So if you're super early, you might not actually be able to get into the building, but eventually you'll be allowed into the building. You'll probably check in with some sort of a receptionist in a lobby. That's where you'll present your IDs. They'll say, okay, cool. Uh, go ahead and have a seat over there with everybody else. You'll be uh, you know, hanging out in an entryway with a whole bunch of other people who are going to be taking the exam that day. You know, a lot of people you know, nervous, some people reviewing their notes, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but eventually the, the proctor is going to come and grab everyone and bring them back to the testing facility. So it's going to be, you know, you're going to be in a normal office building. This is not the only thing going on in that building. So other people are working. You'll see people coming in and out of the building itself. But the room that you're in will be set aside for, you know, the CCIE people. So, you know, non-CCIE people aren't going to be coming just in and out of your room. Uh, the room is pretty much just going to be a, sort of a converted conference room. So a larger space, but nothing special inside there. You'll have your, a bunch of stations and desks where everyone's going to be sitting and, and taking their exams. You know, the proctor might be, you know, up in a, in a, right in there with you. It might be up in a separate little area. It just sort of depends on the location for that one. But you're not in the same room with the racks. Even if you're in Brussels or San Jose, you're not actually in the same room with your racks. Might not be in the same building with your racks at all. Uh, the room's probably, because of this, a fairly quiet room. Although you'll have phones ringing occasionally from the collaboration track people. So if, um, you know, just be prepared that you might hear phones going off from time to time. I uh, mentioned it last time, but dress in layers and be ready for a warm or cold room. Now, I mean, it's, it's a climate controlled room, but if it's winter, you might be right underneath the vent that's blasting heat. If it's summer, you might be right underneath the vent that's blasting cold. And so even if overall the room is at a pretty reasonable temperature, you might be in a hot or a cold spot. So, um, you know, wear a short sleeve shirt with something long sleeve over it so that you can just be prepared for either end of the spectrum. Bathrooms are typically located outside of the testing area. So it's not like you just have a, a, a bathroom with the door you just go right into. You probably have to go out into the hallway. Maybe it's across the hall. Maybe it's down the hall to the left and, and over here. They'll tell you where that is, obviously. But again, it might be a, a small hike to get to it. You oftentimes might have a break room available to you. And in the break room, you might be able to get things like water or coffee. There might be a vending machine to grab a snack out of. Uh, but again, this is outside of your testing area. If you are going to do this, you would have to you know, pay out of your own pocket any vending machines or something like that. Um, the proctor might limit the number of people leaving the room at one time. Obviously, they don't want collusion with multiple people of the same track. Now, you're the only wireless person in there. Um, so if, if you really need to, to head out and use the restroom and some route switch person is, is out there, say, hey, there's no other wireless people here. Can I please go use the restroom or something like that. Clock does not stop when you use the bathroom or go get a drink or anything like that. So if you can sort of save up your bathroom trips or, or whatever it's going to be during lunch when the clock actually is stopped, that's ideal. Um, obviously, they're there if you need them, but uh, hopefully you don't need to use them constantly because, again, uh, that's all time that goes away without any uh, points being gotten, unfortunately. So the proctor, you know, is going to address everyone as a group and kind of go over the rules uh, of the day, the schedule of the day. Now, everyone is on the same basic schedule. You know, different tracks have different um, numbers of sections and time ranges for their sections. But overall, everyone starts at the beginning at the same time. Everyone stops for lunch at the same time. Everyone goes to the lunchroom together. Um, 
everyone comes back from lunch and gets started after lunch at the same time, meaning that everyone normally ends the day at the same time unless they've been potentially given a little extra time because they had a, a, an issue that uh, had to be resolved uh, for them. So um, they'll kind of let you know when different things will happen, you know, um, start, lunch, and all that good stuff. And then the proctor's going to assign everyone to their station. So they'll say, okay, you know, you, you're right over here. You'll go ahead and sit down. And I think there'll be some instructions there for, you know, logging in and accessing your, um, your interface and that type of stuff. So you can't bring a lot to your station with you. Um, anything that you can't bring to the station with you, you're going to have to store it somewhere. Now, different locations have different methods for how they store things. Some might have like these little cubbies. They might have these little lockers. Some might just be, hey, there's a table. Just put your stuff on the table over there. Now, it's, it's going to be within the room, but it's not like you're going to be able to keep an eye on it the whole time. So I guess it's just up to you uh, whether you want to, you know, just have your phone or, or something like that, your wallet or, or whatever that you can't bring to your desk, you know, just sitting somewhere that you don't have access to it or don't have eyes on it the whole time. Although I can't say I've really heard of problems with people losing stuff or having stuff stolen. Now, things that you may be able to bring to the station with you, earplugs is a pretty much a staple that people are able to bring, you know, probably more like the, the little ones that you stick in the ear, not like the big old headphones that you see the, the people at the airports wearing. Um, Pens and pencils, they do have pens and pencils for you, but if you have a, your own special color-coded system, maybe they'll let you, but maybe they won't because you know, there are electronic pens now that can record what you're writing and they want to be you know, on the lookout for that type of stuff. Uh, you, people can usually bring bre beverages, um, you know, energy drinks or coffee or something like that, uh, usually allowable. Um, maybe snacks. Two. Now, again, it's at the proctor's discretion, so they're probably going to want to check it out and make sure that you haven't put you know, notes on the sides of, of everything. So th they might say no, but um, absolutely earplugs, that's like a normal thing all the time that people use. Uh, everything else y you can ask, but they may say yes, they may say no. So what's at your station? Um, well, first, don't expect a ton of desk space. Uh, it's not like you're going to be able to like really stretch out and, and uh, you know, kick up your feet or anything like that. But on your desk, it's definitely wide enough so that you have two monitors. They're pretty normal size monitors, you know, maybe 21, 22 inch or something like that, probably supporting um, like uh, the what, 1920 by 1080 resolutions. Uh, you're going to have a computer that you know, supplies the, the monitors. The, it might be on the desk, it might be on the floor. You're going to have a standard two-button scroll wheel mouse. I have had uh, some lefties uh, actually get it to where they're allowed to, to shift the left and right click for, for left-handed mouse functionality. So I, I have had people ask for that and, and get that um, uh, made available to them. It's going to be a standard US-based keyboard. And again, regardless of where in the world you are, it's a standard US-based keyboard. And so if you're someone who is over in Europe or, or somewhere where, where you don't use a, U, a standard US-based keyboard, you might want to actually just buy one off of eBay or off of Amazon or something like that. It doesn't have to be super expensive. But um, oftentimes what's different, like the, the letters are oftentimes in the same place, but a lot of the extra keys off to the side, like your enter, your pipes, um, question marks sometimes are in slightly different places and so your muscle memory is going to mess with you for the keyboard you're used to when you try to, to use the US based keyboard. And so I definitely have people that will buy those and practice on those so that they can get a little bit of muscle memory for, for that type of stuff. You'll have a, like a little cup that's got a bunch of pens and pencils and probably half of them won't work but some of them will and, and so you'll have something to write with. And then you're going to be given scratch paper. Most places it's, it's two pieces of paper. I've heard one person said I only got one. Um, you can, you're supposed to be able to ask for more from the proctor, but um, there, it's just normal letter size printer paper, no lines or anything like that. On the side is printed your information because this paper has to stay there. Otherwise, if your paper is not there, <laughs> and you take it with you, they're going to, even if you didn't take it with you, but you like threw it in the garbage or something like that. If they don't see that paper there, 
they're going to assume that you're taking secrets out, right? And that's going to be very bad. So uh, the paper does have to stay there uh, when you walk away. But it's there. You can use it for your, your task tracking, diagrams, whatever it is that you want to use it for. And again, if you need more, you should be able to ask the proctor for more. So that's what's actually physically in front of you. Um, what's actually accessible on your computer. So on the computer, you're going to have the lab interface. So that'll be you know the diagnostic interface for the diagnostic section, the configuration lab interface for the configuration section, and those are in browser windows. You're going to have PuTTY for your console access through terminal servers. They're individual PuTTY windows. You're going to have RDP connections primarily to your Windows 7 PC, although you can RDP to the Windows 2012 server, but that's usually not needed. Um, the Windows 7 PC should have Firefox and IE and Chrome. Um, AnyConnect, Jabber will all be available on your Windows 7 PC. Um, you'll have, again, on your lab PC, the notepad available to you. You'll have calculator available to you. You'll have a web browser available for documentation purposes. Um, all that's accessible to you on your computer. And I don't know if I have another video about this. So let me just talk about really quick the, the documentation available to you. All right, let me pull up cisco.com. So you're actually accessing the live Cisco website, but they have filters to control what pages you're allowed to get through here. Um, so the start page, if you go to support and downloads and under product support, go to all products. This is your link here. And so this is the URL, if you can see that there. But this is your start page. So when you open up the browser on the PC, you'll see this page. And then the idea is that you can dig into the, the menu structure here to get to a product page. So maybe it's your controller, maybe it's Prime, maybe it's ICE. But let, let's go ahead and get to some 5500 controller documentation. So I, I go to wireless. Let's go ahead and find the 5500. 5500 series controllers, 5508 wireless controller. And so usually you, you eventually land on a product page like this, where you'll have a, sort of a main pane here. And then there's usually something over on the right hand side. So whatever is kind of in the main sort of left hand uh, column here, you should be able to access these documents. Things over on the right hand side, don't expect to be able to access any of these things. Don't expect that you can actually open a TAC case during the lab and, and have them troubleshoot your issue for you. Unfortunately not. Um, don't expect to be able to do anything on the top menu here. Don't expect to be able to search cisco.com. Don't expect to be able to search anything in any search field. Don't expect that that's going to work. We're going to have to be just be clicking into things. Um, but again, as long as it's on this main column here, it, it should be fair game. So command references, config guides, tech notes, troubleshooting, you know, notes, all this stuff should be accessible to you. And so, um, so let's say I wanted to get into a, a config guide. So 8.3 is the code that we run in. So here's the config guide. And then you can go in and again, dig into your, again, you shouldn't be able to search. So I don't think search in the book is going to work, but definitely find within a page does work. So let's say that I was going to jump into, oh, how about a mesh? And if I wanted to jump to something, I can do a control F to find within the page. So the normal browser find within a page functionality that does work. So if you want to jump to a keyword, you know, you can do that and, and move down into different things. So that absolutely can work. It's just, we can't search within things, but find within a page does work. Now, something that uh, one of my students brought up to me not too long ago, and this appears to be an issue that doesn't currently have a, a solution. So when you open up a document, you might be presented with a page that looks like this, where you're going to have sort of a table of contents with these links that expand and contract. We are running into problems, at least this was verified, at least within Chrome, and I don't know if it's going to be within other 
browsers as well, where clicking on the link to expand did not expand it. It just, you'd just be clicking and nothing was happening. And unfortunately, the only thing that's not within an expanded list is preface on this document. And so the person wasn't able to actually get to the part of the document that they wanted to get to because it wouldn't expand and, and give them the link to get to what they wanted. So um, I, I did you know, put a ticket in on this and evidently there's nothing that can be done about this at this time. So it's a known issue that you can run into. So I just wanna make sure that you're aware of that. Now, maybe by the time that you take the exam, after this you know, video has been recorded, uh, the issue potentially isn't there anymore. You can try a different browser besides Chrome. Maybe it, a different browser won't have the problem, um, but just heads up. So if you wanna use this config guide, there is, um, uh, there is an index, and so if you can find the the index, I think it was something like, oops, let's refresh it. It was like cg83 underscore index dot html. Yeah, you can get to the index, and then you can actually see everything and click into it. So basically, I, I clicked into a, like the preface page and then just replaced the very end with cg83 underscore index.html. So if you really want to have this available to you, you, you might want to know that little trick. So, But um, uh, I don't believe you can download PDF copies or anything like that. Uh, so I believe you're stuck with what's available to see in the browser. Okay, but that is available to you. So... Um, you're sitting down in front of your, your, uh, your desk, you've got your computer's uh, screens up in front of you. Okay, the, the proctor says go. We, we start off with the diagnostic section. Now there's no access to equipment during this, so you're just gonna be you know, looking at information in a web browser at this point. You get one hour for that, no more, no less. After one hour, you'll be able to move on to the configuration section. Uh, one quick note about that is that um, you can open up a notepad um, during the diagnostic session and that doesn't you know, go away. Uh, you know, basically, it's just the diagnostic window is going to close and then we, we open up a, a different window. But uh, some people have, um, if they had time left over at the end of the diagnostic section, will maybe start putting notes in notepad or actually configs in notepad, especially people who have seen the lab before. And if they see the same thing again, they, they have a list of configs that they want to be able to paste in pretty quick. They'll, they'll do that, and that, that'll absolutely work. That notepad will stay open from one section to the other. Um, so you get into the config section. At, at some point, you'll have lunch. You know, so different places start at different times of the day. Different places will have their lunch at different times of the day. So uh, they'll tell you when. So at lunch, again, everyone stops at the same time. Everyone gets up goes eats lunch together, so you leave your station, you go somewhere else, you eat lunch, you come back, they start, and then you're off and running again until the end of the day. The lab, uh, when the lab's done, you grab your stuff and you head out the door and you wait <laughs> at that point. So what's for lunch? You know, big question of the day, a lot of, a lot of jokes that, you know, some people, uh, the CCIE is a, is a $2,000 lunch. So it better be a good lunch, right? Well, eh. It's, it's okay. Um, so that I think pretty much everywhere you go, at least all the major places I know, uh, lunch is catered in for you, meaning you have no choice as to what they order. You just get to pick from what's put in front of you here. So um, you, you, there's hopefully something in there that you'll somewhat enjoy or, or at least tolerate. Uh, but everyone, again, sits in a room and eats together. You know, it might be... You might have to leave and go somewhere else and eat. It might be like an adjoining room and you eat there, but uh, everyone kind of sits together and eats. Um, you can definitely go use the bathroom at this time. Um, it's a perfect time to go use the bathroom because the clock has stopped. So you have plenty of time to eat, use the bathroom before we're going to go back to your, your station and start back up again. There used to be places where you could actually go to a cafeteria and they would give you a voucher and you could pick any place in the cafeteria and order any food you want. Uh, San Jose used to be like that back in the day, but unfortunately they are catered in now as well. So 
that's uh, that's kind of the way that it goes. So that's sort of the uh, the flow of the day and, and what it's going to be like getting in, getting situated, uh, the schedule of the day, and and what lunch would be like.